Right, there's like a million and one explanations for all of this stuff out there. But I wanted to run it down quickly and concisely as possible. Maybe you'll get, you know, what you need out of this where you couldn't get it out of, you know, some other sources. I, I still see this these questions asked a hundred times a day. What are calibration frames? What are we doing with them? How do we use them? Why? You know, <clears throat> And it's real simple. When when you're taking pictures of things outside the atmosphere with the telescope and your camera, you're introducing a lot of you know artificial things into your image. The signals from your sensors, the the dust on your lens. There's a lot of crap in there that didn't come from outer space, and you don't want that. So what you do is you take calibration frames, and uh, it's real simple. Uh, there's three three main types that we take flat starks and bias uh, bias measures the uh, inherent signal noise that your camera has in it when it just turns it on that signal is always there that noise pattern is always the exact same pattern that's just what your camera does when it powers up the sensor there's a little bit of noise there that's the bias signal the dark current uh, is what builds up over time with temperature uh, the more you try to gather data off that sensor the more noise builds up that's what the dark is taken for and the flat measures the differences in illumination over your sensor because of vignetting and dust primarily so what you do is you go and take all these calibration frames. Bias is real easy. Just take the quickest exposure you can with the lens cover, with, with no light hitting the sensor. That measures your bias signal. Flats are simple. You, you, you evenly illuminate your imaging train with an LCD tablet or a shirt looking at, you know, high noon on a clear blue sky. Or, you know, just, just evenly illuminate your imaging train in the same configuration that you took your lights on you, you know that that's very important if you know you bump it somehow and some dust gets knocked into a different position on your sensor that flat's going to be no good anymore because now you've got a dust moat in a different place um, so the flats have to be taken with your imaging train in exactly the same configuration so you evenly illuminate the sensor and I just center the histogram that's what I always do there's a measurement you're supposed to shoot for I'd never bothered the darks are taken with no light hitting the sensor at the end at the same exposure length gain and sensor temperature as your light frames <clears throat> and that's to measure your dark current there are uh, there's a lot, I hear a lot about uh, flat darks nowadays people are taking darks for their flats and I think that's that's excessive okay I, I could show you an image where dark flats were applied to the flats and an image where dark flats weren't applied to the flats they'd look exactly the same to you. I'd give you a hundred million trillion dollars if you could tell the difference between an image that had dark flats applied and didn't have dark flats applied. That's just too much. I don't even take darks. But anyways, yeah, darks remove things like hot pixels which are easily removed with cosmetic correction and uh, just the, the readout noise. Lots of people take them. The, if you do the problem with the problem for me is I use a DSLR and I can't control the sensor temperature so darks are just dumb but if you have a cooled camera and you can precisely get your te sensor temperature correct then yeah take darks those are those are the three types of frames darks flats and bias now uh, the bias signal is present in everything your camera does so that needs to be subtracted from everything your camera does you need to subtract your bias from you know your dark flats your flats subtract your bias from your dark and subtract your bias from your light frames right so you gotta subtract your bias from everything then you would go and subtract your uh... your dark flats if you take them from your flats and then you would then take your calibrated flat your calibrated dark and your bias you do all this in the same steps and then subtract them from your sub and that will give you a calibrated sub that's ready to align and integrate 
into a final image. So yeah, calibration frames are real simple. Once once you know what you're trying to do, you're trying to eliminate the imperfections in your imaging train and create as clean a signal as you possibly can to then go and integrate into a final image. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments.